Hello, and welcome to the training using the GTS Transceiver PCI Express Hard IP. This training is designed to introduce you to some of the features and concepts when designing with the PCI Express Hard IP found in GTS Transceiver blocks. By the end of this training, you will be able to describe the architecture and features of the PCI Express Hard IP found in GTS Transceivers. You will be able to customize the Hard AP, enabling, disabling, and configuring Hard AP settings for your specific design needs. You will also be able to incorporate the PCI Express Hard AP into your FPGA design by understanding IP interfaces and port connections, as well as including additional IP necessary for a successful compilation. The agenda for this training begins with a review of the GTS transceiver architecture. Then we will look at the GTS PCIe hard IP in more detail to understand the architecture and the PCIe features. Next, we investigate the design flow when targeting the PCIe hard IP. This includes customizing the hard IP for your platform and understanding its connections to your application logic. Before we end, we will quickly look at a design example you can generate as a hardware reference. And for those porting designs from Cyclone 5 devices, we will end with a comparison of PCIe features between Agilex 5 and Cyclone 5 FPGAs. So let's start with a review of the GTS transceivers. GTS transceivers are found in mid-range and edge FPGAs, targeting applications that require high bandwidth, low latency transfers. These applications must also balance this performance with cost and or power. The Agilex 5 FPGA device family is an example. These transceivers support PCI Express Gen 4 up to by 8. They contain hardened Ethernet Max supporting 10 and 25G. The transceivers can run up to 28.1 gigabits per second NRZ for custom or non-standard protocols. The GTS transceiver bank is the main building block of the transceiver. Each bank contains four PNA channels and four hard IPs, FEC, PCS, Ethernet, MAC, and PCIe. The bank also has one system PLL and a reference clock network to provide reference clocks to the system PLL, as well as other PMA channel PLLs. The reference clock network spans across multiple banks to allow sharing of clocks. The number of GTS transceiver banks varies depending on the density of the FPGA and its package variants. As an example, this slide shows the GTS transceiver banks found in Agilex 5 E-Series and D-Series devices, particularly in the B32A package. The dark gray square in the center of each diagram represents the smallest package. As you move out, the larger and lighter squares represent increasingly larger packages. The size of the FPGA members in that package is indicated by the number in blue, and the number of transceivers available in the package is shown with the number in red. This table shows the various configurations supported by the GTS transceiver bank, along with the GTS resources used, and example protocols making use of that configuration. There are six configurations, hardened PCIe, hardened Ethernet, Hardened USB 3.1, PCS Direct, FEC Direct, and PMA Direct. The PCIe configuration is highlighted here. As you can see, it uses the PCIe Hard IP and the PMA. With our understanding of the GTS transceivers, we can now focus on the PCIe Hard IP and its architecture. There are two variants of hard IP for PCI Express available in GTS transceivers. First is the PCI Gen 4x4 variant, optimized for low power. This variant can be found in Agilex 5 E-Series FPGAs and is shown in the upper diagram on the right of this slide. The second variant is PCI Gen 4x8, optimized for performance. This variant can be found in Agilex 5D series FPGAs and is shown in the lower diagram on the right of this slide. Similar to other FPGA families, both variants implement the complete protocol stack, including the transaction, data link, and file layer. 
Both variants are fully compliant with PCI Express Base Spec Revision 4.0 and Pipe 4.41. We will talk more about the blocks in each diagram as we move forward. In E-Series devices, there is a single PCIe controller in each GTS transceiver bank, with each controller having the ability to function as a single PCIe link. This is shown in the diagram on the right. This means that each GTS transceiver can, at most, implement a single physical link. So, for example, you cannot have two by one interfaces in the same bank. Let's say you need two by ones or two by twos. Then you must implement your design using two separate banks. Each bank would use one piece of its by four controller. Each bank also has its own system PLL, reference clock, and hard reset controller. However, reference clocks for the system PLL and TX PLLs can come from other different banks using a built-in regional reference clock line. Note, if the PCIe link is configured as by one or by two, then you will have either three or two transceiver channels left over. These channels can be used for non-PCIe protocols, but they must use a system PLL from another GTS bank since the local one is consumed by the PCIe controller. The BI-4 PCI controller supports Gen 4 and Gen 3 speed configurations. You cannot directly configure the controller for Gen 2 or Gen 1 speeds. Gen 2 and Gen 1 speeds can only be achieved via link down training during link configuration. Each controller supports BI-4, BI-2, and BI-1 with configuration. As you can see from the table on the right, all speed and width configurations of the BI-4 hard IP can be configured as endpoints, as root ports, or in transaction layer bypass mode. TLP bypass mode, available in most newer FPGA families, allows you to bypass most of the transaction layer of the hardened controller to implement your own transaction layer in the FPGA core logic. With this, you can support PCIe features not native to the GTS PCIe controller. D-Series devices contain two types of PCIe controllers, by eight controllers and by four controllers. While each GTS transceiver bank still only has a single PCIe controller, the type of controller alternates as you move up the device. Looking at the graphic, bank A at the bottom has a by four controller. Moving up, bank B has a by eight controller. Bank C has a by four controller. And bank D has a by eight controller. This means that two banks, such as A and B, can be combined to support a by 8 PCIe link, while banks C e and D can be combined to support a by 8 link as well. So, for example, if banks A and B are combined to support a by 8 link, then only the PCI by 8 controller in bank B is active for PCIe. The system PLL and hard reset controller in bank B are also active. The by 4 controller in bank A is inactive along with its system PLL and hard reset controller. Like in the E-Series, each bank also has its own system PLL, reference clock, and reset control. However, reference clocks for the system PLL and TX PLLs can come from other different banks using a built-in regional reference clock line. Reference clocks can be used and or shared by different banks using a regional reference clock line. But besides their own bank, Reference clocks are limited in that they can only drive the two banks above and the two banks below their own bank. Also, like in the E-Series, channels not used for PCIe can be used for non-PCIe protocols, assuming the clocking resources needed are available. While both controller types support BI-4, BI-2, and BI-1 width configuration, only the BI-8 controller supports BI-8 width configuration. But if you do not need a BI-8 interface, you can use both controllers for BI-4, BI-2, or BI-1 operation. This is essentially what is done in E-Series devices, with two GTS banks each implementing independent links. As you can see from the table on the right, all speed and width configurations of the BI-8 and BI-4 hard IP can be configured as endpoints, as root ports, or in transaction layer bypass mode. This slide makes clear the rules regarding transceiver channel versus PCIe lane usage in both D and E-series devices. 
For all link widths, lane 0 must align with channel 0 in the bank, the lowest channel. So if you are using PCIe by 1, then you must use channel 0. If you are implementing a by 8, then lane 0 is channel 0 of the lower bank, banks A and C in the diagram on this slide. If by 2, then lanes 0 and 1 must be in channels 0 and 1. Again, for a by 8 interface, this would be the lower of the two banks. For by 4, the entire bank is consumed, with lane 0 again starting in channel 0. You cannot put PCIe by 4 across two banks, for example, trying to use channels 2 and 3 of bank A and channel 0 and 1 of bank B. The by 4 interface must be within a bank boundary. Finally, for by 8, your interface must use the dedicated bank pairs, such as banks A and B, or banks C and D. You cannot put the interface across two banks that are not paired for PCIe, like B and C. This slide and diagram highlight the clocking resources in the GTS transceivers when configured for PCIe. The first two clock domains are the pipe clock and the core clock. The pipe clock is shown in green in the image. This clock is generated by the TXP LL in the transceiver channels. This clock frequency switches dynamically for the link based on the link speed negotiated during link training, so you cannot set its value in the IP. This clock drives the transceiver PMA and PCS. The core clock is derived from the pipe clock and drives the PCIe controller. The third clock domain is the PLD clock. This clock frequency is fixed. It is set by configuring the IP cores, both the PCIe IP core and the system PL IP core, which we will learn about later. This clock feeds into the FPGA fabric to facilitate transfers between the transceiver and the PGA logic. There is a clock crossing FIFO between the core clock and the PLD clock domains. This bridges the higher frequency core clock and the lower frequency PLD clock domain. Note some parts of the PCIe IP are implemented in the FPGA fabric, running off of the PLD clock. So looking at the diagram more closely, we can see it represents both D and E series devices. The lower bank represents banks A and C, and the upper bank represents both B and D. The only difference between D and E series devices here in this diagram is the green vertical wire between the blocks. This wire exists in D-series devices, but is not found in E-series. We can see the three clock domains, the pipe clock in green, the core clock in yellow, and the PLD clock in pale blue. In both banks AC and BD, you see that when configured for PCIe, the channel 0 PMA generates a clock that drives all PCIe PCS blocks in the bank. This is the pipe clock. In D-series devices, when two banks form a by 8 interface, the PCS clock for both banks comes from a single channel. Also notice that a single system PLL generates core clocks for both banks. Again, the frequency of this clock is set to during IP configuration and is margined to make core timing closure easier. This slide shows how the core clock and PLD clocks can change based on the link speed. Again, the PLD clock shown in the column on the right, is provided by the hard IP to the FPGA fabric. Here you can see the clock speeds based on lane width and speed. Since Gen 2 and Gen 1 are not supported natively and only through link down training, the PLD clock during down training will continue to follow the original speed of the hard IP. So if you configure the IP for Gen 4 and it down trains to Gen 2, the PLD clock frequency will continue at the speeds for Gen 4 listed here. The same applies if you configure the hard IP for Gen 3 operation. This and the next slide describe the transceiver reset operation when the PCIe hard IP is enabled. So there's one independent PE reset pin for each bank, coming from the HVIO bank and Agilex 5 devices. Each bank has a dedicated hard reset controller and reset arbiter. They monitor reset inputs and apply them to the controllers and the transceiver channels in a staggered manner to minimize SSN. So, for example, together they would ensure that no more than one hard reset controller is issuing resets at any one time. 
The bottom figure shows the D-Series reset controls. The overall idea is the same, the difference being if two banks are combined to configure by 8 PCIe. The hard reset controller operation will come from the transceiver bank that contains the by 8 controller. Some final notes on the reset logic. During reset entry, the sequence is PCIe controller reset, then PCS and PMA reset, and then TX, PLL reset. During reset exit, the sequence is TX, PLL exit, then PCS and PMA exit, and then PCIe controller exit. Lastly, note that the hard reset controller does not reset the system PLL. Now that we understand the GTS transceiver PCIe hard IP architecture, let's look at the process for designing with one. To configure the GTS PCIe hard IP for your design, you will use the GTS PCI Express IP. A diagram of the IP is shown on this slide. As you can see, the IP wraps around all of the PCIe hard components in the GTS transceiver along with an IP core soft logic block, shown in orange on the right, that interfaces with your user logic in the FPGA fabric. The initial release of the IP will support only power user mode. Other modes are planned to be enabled in future releases of the Quartus software. The IP provides the PCIe protocol stack, including the translation, the data link, and physical layers. Power mode gives you complete control over the PCI stack and its features, such as control over PCIe transaction layer packets, credit handling, and various modes that define the interface to the user logic or application layer. In power user mode, the TLP received from the PCIe link is forwarded to the application interface along with additional information such as the bar number and function number. The user side is also provided with additional interfaces for error handling, error reporting, reading and writing to registers in the hard IP, and reset handshake functions. Similarly, the user application is responsible for constructing complete TLPs according to PCIe rules and forwarding them to the IP, which will then forward the completed TLPs to the link. Users must implement logic to handle credit management, as well as tag allocation and management. To configure the IP, open the GTS Axie Streaming IP for PCI Express Parameter Editor for the IP catalog found in Quartus or Platform Designer. The Parameter Editor is arranged as a series of tabs each focusing on some aspect of the IP core. The first tab is for configuring the IP interfaces to the link or the application layer. Here you can choose a PCIe profile, which determines which IP features are shown in the parameter editor. Here, we are showing the basic profile, which is the default. You can select Gen 3 or Gen 4 as the hard IP speed, the number of lanes in your link, and the width of the application interface. You can enable TLP bypass here to connect your own application layer to support features not native to the IP. You can choose the frequency clock presented by the IP to the FPGA fabric for clocking the application. And finally, you can enable optional side interfaces such as the completion timeout interface for indicating completion timeout events to the application and the configuration timeout intercept interface for allowing the application logic to detect the occurrence of a configuration request on the link. The Axie Interfaces tab provides options for the Axie interfaces to the application logic. There is the Axie Streaming interface for transmitting and receiving TLPs and the Axie Light interface for access to the CSRs. You may have an option to choose a clock frequency for the interface if allowed. The PCIe Settings tab lets you configure basic PCIe properties. These values will get programmed into the configuration space registers during FPGA configuration of the hard IP in the GTS transceiver. This screen capture shows the bar setup. Another tab lets you program the ID registers. And finally, on another tab, you specify the capabilities that you want to broadcast during discovery. Now that you see how to choose your hard IP settings, Let's look at some more detail on how to use the hard IP in FPGA design. First, let's look at the Axie Streaming Packet Interface. 
The figure on the top here shows the packet formats of the GTS PCIe IP, so you can see how the PCI TLP bytes map into the AXI streaming data bus as well as the alignment. Note that if you are familiar with the PCIe hard IP found in older FPGA families, those IP use Avalon as the TLP packet interface. Newer IP like this one are using AMBA AXI stream, so just be aware that the data formatting and alignment will differ. This should not affect software or drivers, but it will affect how downstream design components are connected in that they will need to be updated to adapt to the new format. The timing diagram in the middle of the slide shows an example of sending a headers-only TLP and a header with data TLP over the AXI streaming transmit interface. Of course, more timing diagrams and their descriptions can be found in the user guide. For user connections, there are three clocks provided by the IP, core clock HIP, AXI streaming clock, and AXI light clock. Designers can use Core Clock HIP to drive logic in the FPGA fabric. AXI Streaming Clock is the main data path clock used by the AXI packet interfaces on the hard IP. AXI Light Clock is for the sideband interfaces such as the CSR interface. Both AXI clocks may be synchronous or asynchronous to Core Clock HIP depending on the link speed and the frequency selected for Core Clock HIP. Besides the pin reset we talked about earlier, this slide lists the various reset signals that make up the IP. The first signal is a reset status signal. As long as the signal is low, then the IP is in reset. The application may use this to drive its reset network. The next two are the IP reset inputs to drive the subsystem, one cold and one warm. Next are the reset inputs to the AXI interfaces. Finally. The remaining signals are basically the handshake signals between the IP and also the reset sequence logic described earlier. So with these signals, there are two reset domains for the IP, cold reset and warm reset. Cold reset follows the application of main power. It is initiated by pin PE reset and signal. Warm reset is a reset that occurs without cycling main power. With both reset types, the subsystem warm reset signal and the resets for both AXI interfaces are asserted. The PMA, the PCIe controller, and the IP core soft logic also undergo reset. In addition, the cold reset asserts the subsystem cold reset signal. Before we end our look at the GTS PCI Express IP, we also need to be aware of some additional IP either needed or useful in building a functioning system. These are the GTS System PLL Clock IP, the GTS Reset Sequencer IP, the Scalable Scatter Gather DMA or SSG DMA IP. Before we end our look at the GTS PCI Express IP, we also need to be aware of some additional IP either needed or useful in building a functioning system. These are the GTS System PLL Clock IP the GTS Reset Sequencer IP, the Scalable Scatter Gather DMA, or SSG DMA IP. Creating a design using the GTS PCI Express IP requires the use of two additional IP, the GTS System PLL Clocks IP and the GTS Reset Sequencer IP. These additional two IP are shown in the diagram on this slide along with the signal connections to the PCIe IP. As we learned earlier in this presentation, the system PLL provides the clock that drives the core of the hard IP and is required in all PCIe interfaces. Similarly, in your design, the GTS system PLL clock's IP must be explicitly instantiated and connected to the GTS PCI Express IP. Notice in the diagram that the PCIe IP has its own differential reference clock input. This input is used to drive the PNA of the transceivers. The GTS system PLL clock's IP has its own reference clock input and its output drives the system clock input to PCIe IP. Again, this IP and its connections are required. In addition, there is a clock PLL lock signal that goes into the PCI subsystem IP. Looking at the reset, 
The reset sequencer produces a clock output that connects to the iFlux clock input on the PCIe IP. Only one reset sequencer IP instantiation is required for all the PCIe and non-PCIe channels on a single side of the device. Finally, connected to the user logic are handshake signals described earlier. DMAs, or direct memory access, are commonly used to enable efficient data transfer between host memory and device memory. For older FPGA families, we introduce the Scatter Gather DMA, or SGDMA. We now introduce the Scalable Scatter Gather DMA, or SSGDMA, IP. This IP works when paired with the GTS PCI Express Intel FPGA IP in power user mode and connects via the AXI4 stream interface, but only when the clock, frequency, and data widths are matched. So when configuring the SSG DNA IP using the parameter editor shown in the screen capture on this slide, you must make sure you also configure the data and clock frequency according to the values chosen for the user logic application interface. And on the interface to user logic application, the SSG DNA IP can support both AXI4 memory map and AXI4 streaming device ports with a single DMA channel. The available device port options are host to device AXI4 stream port, device to host AXI4 stream port, and host to device AXI4 port. This allows you to select the device port that best suits your user logic requirements. This block diagram illustrates the connections between the host and the PCIe IP and logic in an Agilex 5 FPGA, including the SSG DMA. On the left, we have host system and memory. The host DMA driver accesses DMA descriptors, which contain DMA transfer information and reside in the host memory. The host connects to the Agilex 5 FPGA via the PCIe link. The GTS PCIe IP in power user mode connects to the SSG DMA IP using the AXI4 stream interface and light interfaces we discussed earlier. On the right side of the diagram, user logic side connects to the SSG DMA IP. You can see the three port types we discussed on the last slide along with a fourth type called the BAM AXI4 port. This port is used for burst memory read and write operations. Now that we understand the GTS transceiver PCIe IP better, let's see how you can simplify your design flow using the design example. Like many Intel IP cores, the IP parameter editor can also generate an example design in Verilog and VHDL. The example design is a fully validated design for simulation and hardware testing. You can target a specific development kit with the design, if available. Generate the design example using the Example Designs tab in the Parameter Editor. The design example supports simulation with popular simulation tools supported by the Quartus software. The design can be compiled with and without hardware support. Note that a software driver is not auto-generated during compilation. Here is a block diagram of the Parallel Input Output, or PIO, design example. On the left is the root complex representing the host side of the link. In the FPGA, you can see all of the IP required by a functional PCIe design, as well as the PIO block representing your application layer. Before we end this training, for those migrating from older FPGA families, we wanted to do a quick comparison of PCIe support between GTS transceivers and Cyclone 5 devices in particular. Cyclone 5 supports up to 2 GB per second in a single direction, while Agilex 5 supports up to 16 GB per second. In terms of topologies, Cyclone 5 supports PCIe Gen 2 by 1, by 2, and by 4 in endpoint and root port implementations. Agilex 5 supports Gen 4 by 1, by 2, by 4, and by 8 in endpoint, root port, and transaction layer bypass implementations. Cyclone 5 supports two PCIe Gen 2 by four links with independent per signals via GPO. Agilex 5 supports either six PCIe Gen 4 by four, four PCIe Gen 4 by eight with independent PE reset pins. In terms of data interface to the application logic, 
Cyclone 5 supports 64 bits and 128 bits, depending on the speed and length. Agilex 5 supports 128 bits, 256 bits, and 512 bits, depending on the selected speed. Also, Cyclone 5 devices use Avalon Streaming for the TLP interface, while Agilex 5 use Axie Stream. This table shows a list of features supported in Agilex 5, but not in Cyclone 5. These include PCI Gen 4 specific features like 10 bit tag, lane margining, latency tolerance reporting, and read timer presence detection. Agilex 5 devices also support extension bus features such as virtualization through SRIOV, precision time measurement, address translation services, and alternative routing ID interpretation. CVP, or configuration over the PCIe link, is supported in both device families. Note, this feature is only supported by select transceiver blocks. In addition to the D0 and D3 power states, Agilex 5 supports ASPM, or Active State Power Management. Cyclone 5 supports 16 MSIs, while Agilex 5 supports the maximum of 32. While both families support separate reference clocks without spread spectrum enabled, Agilex 5 supports SSRS and SSIS. Atomic operations are fully supported in Agilex 5 while Cyclone 5 supports fetch add instructions only. We have reached the end of this session, but before we conclude, let's summarize what we learned. The GTS Transceiver PCIe Hard IP provides a complete but still flexible protocol stack for your designs requiring PCI Express links. Use the GTS PCIe IP parameter editor to customize the hardware to your unique system requirements. Pair your PCIe IP with other IP like the System Clock PLL, the Reset Sequencer, and the SSGDMA for a complete protocol implementation. Intel provides multiple avenues in which to learn about Intel FPGA products. There is the Intel FPGA YouTube channel, which contains 5 minutes quick videos along with longer more in-depth training videos. There is the Intel FPGA training website where you can access e-learning courses made up of narrated slides presented in an interactive player. Lastly, you can also enroll in a live, instructor-led course presented virtually over the web. All instructor-led courses have hands-on exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need more assistance, you can view and post questions to the community forum, which is monitored by skilled Intel FPGA applications engineers. The training team is always looking to improve our material. To do this, a survey will be emailed to your registration email address. We welcome any feedback you may have. This concludes our look at using the GTS PCIe Hard IP. Thank you, and have a good day.